One of the more successful state enterprises in 1985 was the Telephone Company, which continued to move ahead with its massive development program with the assistance of a rate increase. Telco started off the year hoping to install 45,000 new lines. By year's end, it had done that and more. Total lines in service at the end of 1985 was 120,000, a revolutionary development over a three-year period. Four new exchanges were commissioned in 1985 and cut over, equipped with the most modern telephone technology. But perhaps the most encouraging news from Telco was contained in its balance sheet for 1985. While the company ended the year with an overall net operating loss, it did make a profit in 1985. Figures up to the end of October indicated that the telephone company had made a profit of $21.2 million at that time. But the company enters the new year with a major problem in dealing with its finances. With the devaluation of the dollar, all its debt servicing will increase, and Telco has already indicated that the only way to deal with the new problem is to make a further application for a rate adjustment so that its development program can stay on course. The national airline BWIA showed some encouraging signs of improvement, though it ended the year with a net operating loss of $20.8 million. BWI hopes to further reduce this loss in the new year and follow the path of the telephone company before the end of the decade. But unlike Telco, BW competes in a hostile international market. And in 1985, it moved further into the international airline jungle by starting regular services into Frankfurt and Zurich, as well as into Boston. Both services were inaugurated in December. In the region, services were introduced into Martinique, and an Avro service now goes into St. Lucia's VG Airport. During the year, the airline also got more regional support with the signing of an air services agreement with the government of St. Kitts Nevis. The change in the value of the dollar has so far not affected the airline's fears. But at the end of the year, the position of the company was that it cannot comment on what will happen in 1986. Like BWIA, many of the other state enterprises continued to show signs of better management towards an improved financial position, but others did not show much prospect for financial viability. By year's end, one state corporation was in the process of being sold, and another, Forest Park Limited, was being readied for liquidation. Among the industrial giants of the state enterprises, the Iron and Steel Company ended the year with a net loss of $190 million. For Iscot, largely seen as the nation's biggest white elephant, it was a year of ups and downs, but it was in December that a final agreement was reached for the company to have a partner to help it overcome the major difficulties. It will all under be the, under the, the, the direction of Iscot's president. Um, I think the important thing is the training of the of of suitably qualified nationals to replace them. Um, we've said it time and time again that the difference between what we're doing now and what we have done in the past with this court, where we brought people from different cultures, from different countries, is here we have a team of people from the same company, so to speak. The HSW people will be providing a certain type of expertise as a team, and the VA people will be providing another type of expertise, again, as a team. And, and there will not be the necessity, which we're never able to, to do, really, uh, to, to, to weld together a unified, cohesive management team. It is always passing the buck, uh, which I presume is a typical uh, political gambit. Carony Limited, which at year's end had an accumulated debt of more than a billion dollars, was mandated in 1985 to streamline its operation to play a greater role in the nation's renewed agricultural thrust. At year's end, the company had made positive moves to fulfill its mandate. Although farmers have not yet been given lands as expected, the company has been able to work out the logistics of the exercise and will do this in the new year. In 1985, the company also had a marked increase in both productivity and production. For the first time in a decade, sugar output rose, with the production figure exceeding 80,000 tons in 1985. 
Its diversification program included a greater emphasis on rice and other crops in 1985, and plans were laid to enter the fresh meat market with its Bofalipso in partnership with local private enterprise. We have resources, both manpower and otherwise, that we can and must put our agriculture and food production on a firm footing. And we must do this for one simple reason, that food is a basic necessity of life. We can do with anything. We can walk about naked if need be. We cannot do without food. Food is one of the biggest political weapon in the hands of any nation. When you make yourself dependent on anybody else for your food supply, you are selling totally your independence. The agriculture sector seemed to take the cue from Professor George Sammy. It was the only sector where there was an increase in employment in 1985, providing an upswing in agricultural activity with greater availability throughout the year of basic food crops. But farmers complained that in spite of the increased production, they still experienced problems in marketing since they had to literally give away produce during periods of oversupply. To counter this, the Agriculture Ministry put in cold storage facilities during 1985 to store excess produce in order to protect farmers and stabilize prices. At Chagaramas, the Central Marketing Agency now has a capacity to keep two million pounds of fruits and vegetables in cold storage at a rental of six cents per pound per month. And the Food and Agriculture Corporation has entered into private contracts with individual farmers for the supply of fresh produce which will be packaged for sale to groceries and supermarkets. The Caribbean Food Corporation in 1985 assisted in the food export thrust by finding markets in the United Kingdom for a number of vegetables and has started negotiations with the Food and Agriculture Corporation with respect to the packaging and supply of these items to the overseas buyers. The Export Development Corporation also was successful in negotiating markets overseas for some local products. In addition, private enterprises have expressed deep interest in bulk buying of fruits and vegetables for the U.S. and the regional market. These companies are willing to buy container loads of tomatoes, cucumbers, sweet peppers and watermelons. And they have told the Agriculture Ministry they are willing to go so far as grading the products in the field. And there was more positive news in the agriculture sector. A citrus rehabilitation program paid good dividends with a dramatic increase from 44,000 crates in 1982 to 165,000 crates in 1985. The fruits were processed locally by the Citrus Growers Association, but in spite of the improved production, concentrate from Belize still had to be imported to satisfy the need for citrus juices. There was an increase also in the production of cocoa and coffee, and the country continued to be self-sufficient in pork. Its beef industry, though, faced severe competition from imports. There was a recommendation from the Ministry of Agriculture to put restrictions on imported beef in order to protect the local industry from collapse. But by year's end, the industry continued to be in serious problems. Although the nation has now reached self-sufficiency in poultry, the industry continued to import hatching eggs during the year, with government paying a subsidy of 25 cents per chick hatched from these eggs. In the new year, this subsidy will be removed, and the price of chicken will no longer be controlled, because, as the Prime Minister noted in his budget speech, the major beneficiaries of the subsidy scheme are the large integrated suppliers. Fishing also got a big boost during 1985 with a new fishing agreement between Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela. We now have con consolidation of the shrimping areas. In the past, there were three shrimp shrimping areas, and there were always difficulties when our fishermen moved from one area to the other. So these three areas have now been consolidated, so there will be no problems of egress from one area to the other. The second is conservation. As you know, um, it's very important that we conserve our marine resources, uh, living and mineral. And the 
extension of the agreement to our exclusive economic zone has been done on the basis of uh, nine months uh, fishing only, a three months conservation period. Then there's the option, the first option by our companies, our designated companies here in Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuelan companies to the, uh, uh, purchase the catch of our fishermen or their fishermen, the 50% option. There is provision for a fisheries commission which will monitor the implementation of the agreement to ensure that any problems which uh, may arise are dealt with. Locally, the Agriculture Ministry formally commissioned new and modern fishing facilities at Ikakas, Orange Valley, Erin and Claxton Bay, each equipped with cold storage facilities, work areas for fishermen and lockers. In 1985, there was, as in previous years, major complaints about the necessary infrastructure for farmers. Their major complaint again in 1985 was the sad state of access roads. In acknowledging the deficiency in this aspect of its development program, the Ministry of Agriculture said that its experience has shown that the various agencies developing access roads had not been doing the job as expected, and the Ministry started tackling the job in 1985 with the use of its own manpower and equipment.